Melbourne. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and thank you for uh, your time here today. So uh, without much delay, I'm going to share my screen. I was introduced earlier. My name is Claudine Orr and I am one of the recruiters from the Faculty of IT. Um, you can see my name at the bottom of the slide. Now, um, we are all living in the fourth industrial revolution, which is a way of describing the bur blurring of boundaries between the physical, digital, and biological world. It's really a fusion of artificial intelligence, or in short, AI, robotics, the internet of things, 3D printing, genetic engineering, quantum computing, and other technologies. Today, I would like to share with you about IT and what we offer at Monash. More importantly, I would start by saying at the Faculty of IT, our mission is to use IT for social good. And that is translated in uh, our teaching, our collaboration, and our research. Would you agree with me that IT is everywhere? If I were to ask you today, I am sure each one of you have something smart. Definitely a smartphone, a smart TV, perhaps a smart watch, something smart in uh, equipment in your house. And perhaps in a not too far distant future, each of us will have a driverless car. With that, let me first share with you a very, very quick video. IT is changing the world faster than ever before. From safeguarding precious resources, protecting the most vulnerable, addressing imbalances, and creating a more sustainable world. Every project is underpinned by one important goal, IT for social good. We need our computers to be smart. We need them to help us find things in the data that we can't see ourselves. We're working to build models to address the problem of food insecurity. Our models will help governments, decision makers, policy makers work out how to allocate resources and to intervene to help families so they don't end up in a situation where they can't put food on the table. Big Data is connecting researchers with real world information allowing for better decisions to be made on a global scale. Insects and their relationships with flowering plants underlie about a third of food for human consumption. Without these tiny insects, forests collapse. The simulations then enable us not just to understand how the world works, but once we understand that, we can apply what we know and produce better food to feed more people, and we can do it with less damage to the natural environment. Computer simulations are helping even the smallest creatures make a positive change on a big scale. It's really important to study AI because AI is everywhere. Whether you're into economy or medication or treatment or even social good and helping the community, AI is a very real way for you to do that. If you want to change the world, AI is the way to go. Explainable AI is being implemented across disciplines to improve our understanding of how computers think. We understand we're law enforcement, we're accountable to the community. AI and machine learning are just tools we want to put in the hands of law enforcement. We want to put it in the hands of the frontline police to do what they do best, specifically community safety. We're employing machine learning to create a more just and safer judicial system. By harnessing the power of computing and empowering the people behind it, Monash is paving the way for the world of tomorrow. For a more sustainable, ethical, safe, diverse and innovative future. Okay, so the video demonstrates some of the um, areas that we are working with, which intersects with different disciplinary areas. Um, and again, demonstrates our mission statement, which is using IT for social good. That means contributing to society through innovative research, uh, education, interdisciplinary approaches, um, 
as you can see. And on this slide, I just wanted to show you some of the other research areas that we are working on. Uh, for example, with the virtual reality therapy, it's really mixing psychology at um, a virtual environment. And this, this particular research is to uh, play some games that train people with a lower social cognition to understand how people think and feel. This is particularly to improve social skills in young adults uh, with autism. We've also done some research with diabetes, which is in a wearable technology that's not demonstrated here, but there are many, many different areas that in IT intersects with, okay? Um, so you would be familiar with these terms, big data and also artificial intelligence. There are astounding changes predicted over the next 25 years. And students should be really um, learning these technological skills and changes right now. At the faculty, we form a powerful community in the best minds in IT and computer science. So very skilled experts who inspire and empower and a lot of talented research, researchers who innovate and disrupt. Out of Australia's prestigious group of eight universities, um, Monash is the only one with a dedicated faculty of IT. So among the group of eight. Through multidisciplinary courses and cutting edge facilities, we produce capable graduates um, to shape the future of AI, data science, software systems, cybersecurity, human-centric computing, digital health, and IT for sustainability. So over here, uh, this was also demonstrated in the video earlier, but it's a research area that uh, one of our academics, actually the Associate Dean International, Dr. Campbell Wilson's research area, where he's working with the Australian Federal Police to um, help law enforcement to reduce trauma in police officers. So this research is particularly among um, uh, with children um, and abusive um, graphic pictures, right? So using artificial intelligence, they eliminate and filter these pictures so that the police officers in doing their job uh, are not traumatized or it reduce trauma. Again, so this translates back to our mission of using IT for social good. Now, this is a good time to study IT. Why? As you can see, employment projections to 2024 is very positive, particularly as you can see the arrows on the right in the different areas, they're all pointing up. So therefore, as we use more and more data, more and more IT and technology, we will need more and more experts in this field. Last year, in the LinkedIn 2020 Emerging Report, uh, out of the 15 emerging jobs, 10 of them that are bold have some, fo some form of IT required in them. In 2021, they produced this report called Job on the Rise. And one of the key things uh, we all are experiencing right now is really the acceleration of digital transformation and work remotely. So over the last two years, many of us moved from workloads to active wear, right? Even for school, you're probably wearing pajamas studying at home um, or working from boardroom to bedroom. So we have really definitely experienced the acceleration of digital transformation. Now, um, in, the, in the job on the rise report by LinkedIn 2021, the key areas of um, growing jobs are obviously in the care economy. So, you know, anything to do with hospitals, nursing, anything in the care, definitely that was a growth area. But I've also fleshed out the areas related to IT that are jobs on the rise, e-commerce. If you look at where you are living right now, businesses that have survived, currently still operating, are businesses that pivoted really quickly with technology. Retail has really in, um, grown, right? E-retail or e-commerce. Um, digital content freelancers, another job on the rise, social media, digital marketing, um, cybersecurity roles. As we use more and more technology, we also need more and more experts to protect 
the landscape. And you know, um, one of the common and overarching trend in this report was in almost all jobs can now be conducted remotely. We had to, we had to pivot to that. And just being equipped with any digital skill gives you an added advantage. On my next slide, I, on this slide, I want to show you what a graduate um, could potentially earn. Okay, and this one is really um, a, a study that was taken from the um, IT jobs in Australia. And this is basically students who graduate with a postgraduate degree. They could, so a master's degree, you could start with a salary of about 90,000, but your climb within three years is very, very fast. So IT industry, um, even in Australia, is one of the highest salary average, okay? And over the last two years uh, at the university and also in places where you are all working or studying, I'm sure it has changed. At Monash, our, uh, we have adapted by uh, doing a lot of hybrid teaching. So all our lectures are asynchronous. So you can actually lock in while we are um, doing the lecture or at your own time. Um, there has also been a lot of different platforms that were introduced. Uh, for example, at the Faculty of IT, we use Moodle and Echo 360 to uh, engage students and um, promote a lot of teamwork. We have pivoted a lot of exams online and the university also uh, introduced a lot of safety nets for students, um, understanding that you know, it was an environment that's out of the norm that we're studying. At the Faculty of IT, we introduce peer uh, mentors. And on my next slide, I will demonstrate that basically is allocating a mentor, regardless of whether you're coming in for undergrad or postgraduate, a mentor to match you and to assist you through your transition in university and adjustment, a, a mentor for you to connect with. Um, the other thing that we did was also stepped up our weekly coding sessions and boot camps to kind of supplement our course content for students. Um, our tutors are on hand, you just need to make an appointment and um, the platform that we use Moodle, for example, it's it also has a chat room where students can actually post questions and because you know there are people from all over the world um, assessing this um, platform my understanding from my understanding from students who use it is you know sometimes when you post a question within like half an hour you get an answer because there's so many people there but of course our academics and our tutors also go in there to monitor that and we try and engage students also um, virtually uh, in social events to promote connectiveness connectedness our intakes in um, university is February, July. And last year, we also introduced an uh, October intake. And the October intake also is available this year for 2021. Now, this is the peer mentoring I was talking about. We call it tech squads. Uh, and basically, you know, um, senior students can register to mentor new students in. So for senior students, it's also a, a platform for you to build your leadership skills as well and also grow your networks. So why IT at Monash? I already mentioned that um, earlier in my slide, uh, we are out of the group of eight university, we are the only one with a standalone faculty of IT. What that means to you as students is you can see that at Monash, we teach a lot of disciplines in IT from um, the traditional computer science, data science, um, business information systems, down to games development, interactive media, um, cyber security. So we teach about 14, 15 different areas within the umbrella of IT. Um, we also have the largest group of data scientists researchers in Australasia. So you are going to be studying among the best. Um, in terms of our undergraduate program, all our undergraduate programs are accredited by the Industry Benchmark Australian Computer Society. Um, and some of our postgraduate programs are accredited by ACS, not all. In all our programs, both undergraduate and uh, postgraduate, students will have an industry experience opportunity or what we call a work integrated opportunity. 
Further along in one of my slides, I will explain to you what are the work integrated learning opportunities that's available. And I cannot leave this slide without talking a little bit about our ranking. Um, you know, rankings is a very, very competitive platform. All the best universities and our academics are constantly researching and, and publishing to be acknowledged in their space. Um, in the computer, so, uh, computer science and information systems rankings, we rank in the top 100. Um, in fact, in 2020, we went up four steps to be placed at 78. Um, of course, you know, we want you to have a great academic experience when you study at university. And also, uh, we want you to socially connect to improve your network, extend your network. Uh, at the Faculty of IT, we have dedicated clubs and societies. For example, Monset, which is a um, um, cybersecurity club. We have a club that just plays video games. Uh, we have diverse IT, which attracts students from all different disciplines. Um, we have hackathons. So this is just within the umbrella of uh, IT. At the university itself, there are lots of other clubs and societies for you to connect with. I'm sure there's a Thai society, but if you don't want to join the Thai society, you're more than welcome to join the Latin American society if that is your interest as well. But um, do remember to connect not only academic class, but also social clubs to just extend your network. Okay, so the work integrated learning uh, that I spoke about are one of our unique features in the Faculty of IT. So in the undergraduate space, we have this program called the Industry Based Learning or IBL in short. Basically, this program is competitive. So if you are an undergraduate and you come into any of our bachelor's program, you can apply for this program, but you need to uh, meet the academic hurdle. The academic hurdle is you need to first complete one year. You need to average a 65% average, so a credit average. Then you'll be invited for an interview. And the interview are run by our partners. As you can see, some of the logos you probably recognize. Um, they are international logos like PwC, Deloitte, KPMG. Um, and some of them are national. So these companies will then invite these students for interview and you go to two rounds of interviews. They will then rank the students. And if you are selected, you will be uh, placed in the company for up to 22 weeks. And during this time, um, you will apply your theory into practice um, and you, it does not extend your program. Now, this program is attractive because there is also a $18,000 scholarship attracted to, uh, attached to that, one eight, okay, if you are successful. But because this program is competitive, obviously not all students will get into it, but they will still have a work integrated opportunity which comes to the second program, which is the Industry Experience Studio Project. Um, with this program, students will uh, form a group of four and you will have to solve a problem given by the industry. So your solution could be an app or it could be a website. Now, the skills that we want you to take away with this work integrated learning uh, program it is your soft skills, yeah? It's your communication skills. How do you actually work in a challenging environment? You might be in a group where you are with people that you may not necessarily like, for example, but that's the real world, right? So how do you then come up and work through your project um, and come to a solution? And throughout this process, you will be mentored by industry partners and also our academics. Now, this is really important. Um, and the difference between the first program and the second program, the second program happens in university, in a studio environment. The third one, the studio project unit is basically for um, disciplines like interactive media and games development. Now, this is a full year program. If you, if you do this discipline, you will have to develop a digital portfolio. For example, you have to come up with a game, okay, if you are doing games development. And again, this is a team effort. And this digital portfolio particularly is great if you're planning to uh, build a career in that because it's something that you can take away and use it for your interview. The last one is the Monash Industry Team Initiative 
or in short, we call it NITI. And this is a university-wide program um, which gives both undergraduate and postgraduate students an opportunity to work as part of a multidisciplinary team. So um, this program usually runs in summer. So if you're here for summer, um, you can apply for it. You will go and do this internship between December and February. You will have to go through a round of interview. The difference is your team members are not just from IT. So you could be, you represent IT with someone from business, with someone from science, with someone from engineering as a team. You go to a company for about 12 weeks and you will have your um, internship experience. So the university and the company will come up with a project for it. It will be advertised through our web um, for you to come and apply for it and run through the interview. Okay, with that, I have another video here and I believe this is the data science project. The goal of our project was to build a predictive model using machine learning techniques that could predict in patients uh, whether or not it was likely that they'd have heart disease. This particular unit was the most like industry work uh, in the sense that you really own the full project from start to end. Uh, so having that whole holistic um, ownership of the project is really beneficial to entering the industry. You can kind of make it as much as you want it to be. So I think that's really helped me, like having an idea of sort of how to manage my time and resources and energy to do like a full year project. I'd say big data is a really well-known buzzword at the moment in the industry. And it's basically when the volume of data is so large that it becomes difficult for people to use it. There's applications of data science in many new emerging technologies, like even face recognition. That's a really key area that Monash students could go into, like exploring these data sets and it creates real insight for these companies. Maths was never my strongest subject. I like it, but I'm not that good at it. So I really worried about that. But what I found different with university math specifically in computer science is that if you understand something, then you can apply it in yeah. many different situations. For the computer science degree, you will have to study two mathematics subjects. They're slightly more difficult than the math method subject you may have taken in high school. If you've never done anything in IT before, you've never coded, maths is probably the subject that's most similar to what you're going to be doing in computer science. There's a lot of industry demand at the moment for people who've studied computer science and data science, so it's always a great way to go in. Not speaking from the IT industry, but I think people don't think psychology is like statistics and computers, but at least the area that I'm doing is. And I think it's really interesting how we can essentially use statistics and numbers to get insights into like behavior and how the brain works. If you're going to do this subject, pick one of the topics that you have an interest in because you're going to be working with it for the whole semester. From doing our heart disease project, it really opened my eyes to how much in the medical history certain things are ignored because I know a lot of medications aren't even tested on women and they're not even tested across different ethnicities and that can create complications later down the line that people wouldn't have seen before. Yeah. Okay, so that video showed you students who are doing uh, double degrees and the projects that they are working on as well. So let me just introduce some of the programs that we offer at our faculty. So start with the undergraduate degrees. We have four degrees. Uh, the first one is the Bachelor of Information Technology or BIT. Um, and within this IT program, there are five different areas that you can major in. For your information, a major means you're studying eight subjects in that discipline area, okay, to build your um, strength in that area. The next one we have is the Bachelor of Computer Science. And within this degree, we have two specialization, which is the Advanced Computer Science and Data Science, which the girls were talking about in the video before. Um, those two programs, the Bachelor of Information Technology and Bachelor of Computer Science are three years in length. The next degree that we have is the Bachelor of Computer Science Advance, which is an extension to the computer science area where you are um, doing an extra year of research. So this is particularly good um, 
attractive for students who are high achievers and are also keen on doing a research sort of um, career pathway. Okay. And last but not least, we have the Bachelor of Software Engineering. Now, this degree is taught by both engineering and IT. And if you're interested in this program, you actually apply into the Bachelor of Engineering with a major in software engineering. One of the common questions I always get is, what is the difference between computer science and IT? So at Monash, the computer science degree is a little bit more mathematical. So that's why you do need a strong uh, math background. It requires you to think a little bit more mathematically and logically. And it's more about the uh, theory of computer algorithms. Whereas IT, we do require math as well, but not necessarily the highest math. One of the examples that I use to demonstrate both the difference between the degree is Google Map. Okay, If you are uh, planning to use Google Map and you want to get from point A to point B, that's what a computer scientist does, the algorithm Okay, to get you from point A to point B. To use the Google Map on your iPhone or your iPad or even your um, laptop, that's what an IT specialist does. The application of it. Now, this is just a very simple application, uh, simple explanation, but really just to demonstrate the different um, sort of direction of the degrees. All right, so the Bachelor of Information Technology, as I mentioned, is a three-year program. You can do um, one of these majors listed here, as you can see with my cursor, uh, Bachelor of Information Systems or Network Security, Games Development, Interactive Media or Software. Within this degree, you could even do a double major. Okay, a double major still takes you the same amount of time. Or you can do one major and a minor. Now, remember I said a major is eight subjects um, in, this, in a particular area, a minor is four. And on my next slide, I'll show you the discipline areas that you can pick. Okay, so you can see that there is a lot of areas that we teach within the IT umbrella. The Bachelor of Computer Science, we have two specialization areas. The first one is the Advanced Computer Science um, specialist, uh, Specialization Area. And it's really for every uh, problem solvers and analytical thinkers. It will teach you really to design and implement software. Uh, you could potentially work in careers such as software, uh, to be a software engineer or even um, a digital forensic investigator, for example. Or you can specialize in data science. And like its name, it's all about data, right? It's about deep learning databases, data modeling, visualization, um, how really to use data effectively. And at Monash, we have 10 faculties. Um, and there are so many double degree combinations that you can uh, think about. It's just limited to your imagination or your interest. So how you read this slide is, for example, Bachelor of Computer Science, but you're also interested in commerce. So you can do a computer science degree, majoring or specializing in advanced computer science with commerce. A double degree takes you an additional year of study. So a com computer science and a commerce uh, double degree will take you four years. However, if you com combine computer science and engineering, for example, it will take you five years because engineering itself is a four-year degree. Now, to do it simultaneously, it's just an additional year of study. But if you do it one after another, it's obviously six years, right? So there are advantages if you're thinking about a double degree. Now, for students here who are coming out of high school, and you're really not sure whether do I want to do computer science or do I do software engineering? We have this quiz that we have developed. If you go on to, uh, you just put into your Google, find my fit Monash University. There are 13 questions within this quiz. It's fun, it's interactive, but it's also, um, there are some thought put into this and we will come up with suggestion of a discipline area that might best suit you. So have a play around with this if you like. Now, over to the postgraduate programs. At the Faculty of IT, we run five coursework master's program. So the first one is the Master's of Business Information Systems, Data Science, Artificial Intelligence, Information Technology, 
and cybersecurity. What is common about this master program is, first of all, we do not need you to have an IT degree to come in or an engineering degree. Any degree allows you entry into a master's program, what we call a non-cognate entry. That's number one. Secondly, the cost structure of all our master's program are very similar in terms of the structure. So imagine a pie, right? We have a pie that's broken into three parts. All our master's degree has part A, part B, and part C. The first part will give you a solid introduction to the course that you are undertaking. This is where you learn your programming fundamentals. Part B is where you study your core discipline area, okay? And part C, there are two portions to part C. The first part is the industry experience, where again, in a team of four, you will work on a problem to solve an industry um, problem. And as a team, you could be someone from data science, someone from artificial intelligence, someone from IT, someone from business information systems. As a team, you need to come up with a solution from the different angles. And throughout this process, you will also be mentored by the industry. But the second part of it is, if you are interested in research, you could do then a research thesis within part C. All right, so that is common across all our master's program. So the first one, the Masters of Business Information Systems, all our programs are two years in length. If you come in from an IT um, undergraduate, potentially you can apply for credits to reduce it to one and a half year, if you wish. Now, this program is accredited by ACS. And one of the key distinctive um, features about it is basically graduates of this program will be able to speak the language of business and the language of IT simultaneously, meaning that they can explain to managers how technology can influence their business decisions and also can explain to the IT technical people how they need to tailor the technical systems to, um, to work for the organization, okay? Um, so that's basically Masters of Business Information in a nutshell. Um, something has happened here. Sorry, my this has not come out properly. Um, I'll just show you the Masters of Business Information uh, Systems cost map. You can extract this, uh, but basically it's a two years program in length. You will do your programming subjects in your first semester, first year. And then this one is the industry experience stream. So this is where you do your work integrated learning, you know, as a team and you work on the project. So it's a capstone. It seals your master's, all right, in your second year, second semester. Okay. Um, this is the research component. If you decide to go to a research instead of doing IE, this is where you do your thesis, okay? And all our master's program are pretty much similar in terms of the course map here. All right, the next one is the master's of information technology. And basically this is very much similar, I suppose to the Bachelor of Information Technology where you have different disciplines to develop your expertise in. So you can then choose um, disciplines in mobile and distributed systems, for example, machine learning, software engineer, you curate your uh, master's depending on the subject that you um, are, are keen about, okay? Um, and this is program is also ACS accredited. Cybersecurity, like its name, it's all about protecting the system. So uh, in short, sometimes it can be quite white hat hacking. So um, with this program, we also have a lab um, a, that gives you the hands-on experience where you will, it's wired completely different from our university uh, systems where you will have the opportunity to hack into the system and also to protect it. So this program, you really need to understand and learn the uh, infrastructure of the IT landscape really well. And our academics are experts in blockchain and cryptocurrency, internet of things, biometric security, and big data, for example. Okay, so the next one is the Masters of Data Science. Again, like its name, it's all about data. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we also have the largest pool of uh, research 
data scientists in Asia Pacific with our faculty. So you are really studying among the best. Um, and the expertise areas are demonstrated here within the data science umbrella. Machine learning, computer vision, uh, natural language processing, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is uh, MDS, Masters of Data Science. And last but not least is a Masters of Artificial Intelligence, which we introduced. Um, we have um, a higher requirement compared to all our master's program. You need a 65% average in this program. It's two years in length. And to summarize, what are the entry requirements into our master's program? You need to have completed an undergraduate degree. As I explained, it doesn't have to be in a cognate area. Um, and these are entry requirements with the exception of artificial intelligence, which requires a 65% entry. I also often get asked, what are the job areas that I can work in with an IT degree? And as demonstrated in some of the videos, really, you can work in so many disciplines. And this is just um, a slide that shows you, you can work in climate change, uh, in hospitals where digital health is. We have someone, uh, an academic studying bees and insects, and just observing that influences food security, for example. And just uh, before I go, I just wanted to also showcase again, um, there are a number of options both within and in addition to your course that you should consider to develop your employability. So the industry experience is incorporated within our degree. You can also opt for a minor thesis, a research option. We also have a, a career connect arm within the university that basically uh, helps you plan your uh, career and also advertises a lot of job with this. All right. I already spoke about METI earlier. We have Monash Talent, an employment service that sources work opportunities uh, for you while you study and after you graduate as well. And we also have this thing called um, Monash Accelerator Program, where it's an incubator program. If you have an idea to start a business or a venture, um, explore this because this is a platform that will help you kickstart your program as well. And um, before I end, I just wanted to also demonstrate some of our social handles for you to connect with us if you wish. And with that, I am going to stop share and maybe take some questions. So thank you.